Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to Him and bless His name. Mercy He has shown us, His love is forever, faithful to the end of days. And you people, come to Him and sing of the Lord's goodness, praise Him, praise to God. To God, bring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. Praise Him with your singing, praise Him with the trumpet, praise God with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the cymbals, praise Him with your dancing, praise God to the end of days. You people, come on all your nation, sing of the Lord's goodness, praise Him, praise to God. Praise to God, bring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And your friends, as we come before the Lord's table this Sunday, let us continue to place our trust, and not just a bit of trust, but the trust with our whole hearts. And we continue to believe in the providence of God, that He gives us enough grace um, to continue to let our hearts be filled with hope and faith so that we can look out for our family members, for those around us. But for those times when we have been a little bit too self-focused and not so loving in our deeds and not so forgiving, let us ask the Lord for His grace and His tender mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If you fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, and if you keep all his laws and commandments which I lay on you, you will have a long life, you and your son and your grandson. Listen then, Israel. Keep and observe what will make you prosper and give you great increase, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, giving you a land where milk and honey flow. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God 
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Let these words I urge on you today be written on your heart. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my I love you, Lord, my strength, my God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim. from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extort be God, my Savior. You will give great victories to your King and show kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. There used to be a great number of priests under the former covenant because death put an end to each one of them. But this one, because he remains forever, can never lose his priesthood. It follows then that his power to save is utterly certain since he is living forever to intercede for all who come to God through him. To suit us, the ideal high priest would have to be holy, innocent and uncontaminated, beyond the influence of sinners, and raised up above the heavens, one who would not need to offer sacrifices every day, as the other high priests do for their own sins and then for those of the people because he has done this once and for all by offering himself. The law appoints high priests who are men subject to weakness. But the promise on oath, which came after the law, appointed the Son who is made perfect forever. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love Welcome to me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
one of the scribes came up to Jesus and put a question to him. Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well spoken, Master. What you have said is true, that he is one and there is no other. To love with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. This is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice. Jesus, seeing how wisely he had spoken, said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to question him anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, are you blocked? What do I mean by are you blocked? Do you feel, you know, sometimes on some days are not so good, we feel that mm, something in our body is not very right. We feel blocked somewhere. Uh, whether is it we feel that the energy is not flowing or something wrong with our intestines or we're getting a migraine or there's just something in our neck that's not just quite happening and we are feeling blocked. But sometimes we also feel spiritually or emotionally blocked that something just doesn't seem to flow. It could either be our relationship with God, um, that we're trying and then something is not happening. We are trying to make headway with a particular relationship. We're risking a new, um, but somehow there is just this blocking. Something feels that it is obstacleizing it. We feel stuck. There is this stuckness. And there is this sense of oppression, that this oppressive going nowhere kind of a feeling. But can we change this feeling that we're going nowhere to being now here? And the spelling for nowhere and now here is actually the same letters in the same sequence. And we can change this nowhere to now here and to relish in being just here. And I know that some of us are struggling now with our vaccinated travel lanes with the VTL. We feel that, oh, finally we can go somewhere, uh, even though our numbers are rising and rising and it's always so volatile. But we feel that there is now this opportunity to breathe some fresh air somewhere. But actually, this time of being stuck in Singapore or wherever we are, it gives us an opportunity that even though we are stuck here, but do we feel that our souls are nowhere, that we're going nowhere? Or can we actually feel that we are safely held, that we are anchored, that we are centered, and that we know that the Lord is holding us in safety? So that feeling is not something that is stationary, but there is movement within. And I think this is tapping onto our God, our God who is always creating and recreating anew. There is generation, there's always new life. So even though we may feel that nothing around us is happening or we're going nowhere, but within, we feel this joy that's bubbling within us. And that kind of joy comes from a love that is active and flowing. Just like we hear in the Promised Land in our first reading, where God promises um, that in this beautiful land is where milk and honey will flow. Good things will flow. And that's representing God's love. That God's love is not static, but it's dynamic. It is not really condemning us to be in isolation and to be stuck somewhere. But even if we are feeling that we're going nowhere, there is this regeneration that's happening within and that our hearts are full, and that 
from this heart, we can come forth that peace and joy to others. Which is why today in our first reading from Deuteronomy, and again repeated in the Gospel according to Mark, we hear that we have to love the Lord our God with a little bit of our heart, no, with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. Not just a little bit, a little bit, sometimes I want to give, sometimes I don't want to give, sometimes I know how to give, sometimes I don't know how to give, but it's inviting us, challenging us to give all of us yeah, into this love. Because only by opening to God's love completely will we receive also completely from God's love. But the question is, not always are we able to be so open completely. We feel sometimes this blocking, this stuckness, that this part of us that's not happening, not flowing. And so the question for us today is, which part of you is blocked and why? Is it because there's a lack of trust? That we want to trust God but somehow we cannot put our complete trust in God? Or trust in a particular person? Or trust in humanity again? Is there a particular fear that is eating into us and causing us anxiety? And we're not able to have that inner peace within us? Or is it because we're overly attached to a particular person or relationship or a thing or an idea or overly seeking power, reputation, um, material goods that we become so self-focused? And that, in a way, is sin. Because when we fail to look out to others, look out to God, we become too self-focused, hmm, sin is lurking. And that could be some of the reasons why we are blocked. Because love, to be love, needs to be open. Open to God and open to others. And we have Christ as an example. In our second reading today, um, we are told that Christ is holy, innocent and uncontaminated. And let's take a look at this word uncontaminated. What is he uncontaminated by? He's uncontaminated by the world, meaning that there is no overemphasis or overly focus on something of the world. But for him, his whole heart is for God, doing God's will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And in this way, he was able to sacrifice himself, as we hear in the second reading, totally giving off his life out of love for us. And so that's an example for us to follow, my dear friends, not to be self-focused, too self-preserving, that we become too worried, too anxious, somehow to allow God to take over, that we lose control, but not lose control just to let anything that happens, happens, but we lose control and we give control over to God. And so today, we, we look to the scribe. The scribe asked a question and he asked Jesus, which of these is the first among all the commandments? It's a very good question. And I know many of us, we also have a question of our heart. And I invite us today, if there's something blocking us, I think we can turn that blocking into our question. Let's turn this crisis into something beautiful and something mysterious for God to be able to reveal and to unveil this for us. What is the question in your heart? For this scribe, perhaps, because he knows the laws very well, there are 613 laws they have to fulfill as Jews. And sometimes we're so caught up with, oh, do I fulfill this one? Do I fulfill that one? Do I fulfill it properly? What if I break this and break that on this day, on that day? And I think for him, he says, what is the heart of worship? Can all these 613 commandments percolate and be filtered down to just one? That I go to the spirit of this law, which is love, I will know how to do the rest. And it's a, which is why I say it's a very good question. But is there a question of our hearts? And I think the question that we ask, we have to ask the question behind the question. And I think if we are able to do that, then we know in the depths of our hearts what is the true question that we are struggling with and desiring an answer. And that will point to us as well, our true desire. And is our true desire God? And I think we have to be very honest with ourselves. So our questions could revolve around things like our sufferings in life, 
what causes us anxiety? What, are, what is the real question behind our questions about sufferings and anxiety? Is it about our character? Do I feel like not good enough? Not lovable enough? How come I keep sinning? Why always that same few sins? Or do we question about humanity? Why is there so much ugliness and so much um, lack of beauty in humanity sometimes? Are these the questions that um, fill our hearts and our minds? Or maybe your question is about, who am I? Who are you? What is your call? What is your mission in life? What is your identity? Because identity and mission are really two sides of the same coin. And this will sometimes point to the question about faith, about God. Why am I a Catholic Christian? Does my faith mean anything to me? Who is God to me? Why is he important? And why should I even think about him? Why should I even let my life just be about him all the time? So I think these are the questions that we can continue to ask because it actually shows our desire. My dear friends, in all this, first step is to come back to the scribe's question. What is the first? The first step. And the first step, as our Lord t tells us, and that's meant to unblock us, is to love God totally. Give yourselves this opportunity, give us this opportunity to just trust and to give ourselves over to God totally. All our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. To God who brought us into existence, who loved us into creation. And then the next step, our Lord says, love your neighbour as yourself. It sounds like there's a mini step within the second step. That we have to love ourselves too. What does loving ourselves mean? And only when we can love ourselves truly in the way that God loves us, then we too can love those around us, our neighbours. And this love, I think it's three dimension. Vertically to God, internally with self, and then horizontally to our neighbour. And when we unblock one, we will certainly unblock the rest of the channels as well. And my dear friends, this is really, I think, a call from God at this point of our lives to continue to walk this journey, this love adventure with God, and to place our all in Him and Him alone. And my dear friends, with Christians of all ages, let us now profess what we believe in. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come to you, God, our strength, with our petitions for all who need guidance and help. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and Archbishop William Go, that they discover ways to guide God's people towards the common good and help them respond courageously and joyfully to the challenges of our times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church amidst turbulent times, that it steps out even more in faith, turning to the Lord 
and be witnesses of love of God and neighbour. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peoples of every nation, that they reject bigotry of all forms and unite themselves in working for lasting justice, integrity and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we see ourselves and others with deeper insight of God, recognising the God-given talents within each of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we now pray for the intentions of our hearts, the desires of our hearts, trusting that God will hear us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, heal us and transform our hearts so that we share in the grace of your reconciling love. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we perceive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, you become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we perceive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, you become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time as betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clare, St. Anthony, and Blessed Allegra, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and from the divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Onus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Onus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Onus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Turn your people to you with all their heart, O Lord, we pray. For you protect even those who go astray, but when they serve you with undivided heart, you sustain them with still greater care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Oh, 